Hello everybody, it's Oshazizz. I'm out here in my mad science laboratory and uh, I want to talk to you about uh, my uh, solar powered uh, Tesla coil system that I've got going on right here. I left some pictures in the beginning of this video that showed um, the uh, electric fence charger that I'm using. I'm going to try to get this down here on this diode right here. See if I can get the light up on the screen. My finger there where I can see where it's at. Alright, I don't know if that I don't know if that's showing up or not. Get down in here closer. Okay, there it is. Hey, try it again. All right, you see that little diode right there lighting up? That is connected into the dirt. This uh, coil right here is uh, basically just grounded and it's picking up uh, energy off of this. So there's something going on there that I'll, I'll get into later. But in the meantime, let's get back to this gizmo right here. Alright, what's going on here, and if you watch that monitor in the background, you're going to notice that there, every time this thing pulses, um, you get a little distortion in that uh, monitor, a little line going across there. When it pulses strong, it, it'll be a lot harder. I'm sitting here trying to watch it. you got to pay real close attention. Sometimes it's a good line across there. Yeah. Anyway... I've got a uh, 4.5 volt electric fence charger out there that right now it's kind of shady outside because the clouds have moved in on it so it's probably running off mostly battery right about now but what's going on is when the charger outside when the fence charger pulses it's being sent down through these these little uh, fluorescent bulb starters and you can see the plasma build up inside of these two spark gaps now these um, are used uh, are being used as diodes to change the high voltage AC in the DC current charging this capacitor up this is a 6600 UF 60 volt DC capacitor and uh, the longer you leave it on there obviously it's going to charge it more uh, higher but uh, anyway the significance of all this is that first off I'm, I'm uh, using these uh, bulb starters as a bridge rectifier so these uh, one on the positive one on the negative side out there normally on a fence charger you have one that goes connected to the earth ground and then you have one that goes down the long length of the fence but I've got the two wires run in via some old phone cable and those are my positive and negative and there's one of these on each side for the uh, initial spark gap and you can see right in there let me see if I can get this camera in close without distorting it too much because when it does pulse it uh, puts out a little bit of a field an EMP field uh, I don't know if you can see that or not All right. Well, let me dim. Let me dim a little bit of light here and try this again. Sorry about that rough ride there. Uh, all right. Should be able to see a little bit better now. Uh, bring that up higher. All right. I'm gonna have to stretch the legs of this tripod up. see that now okay there you go you got a good view on that now all right so what's the big deal you might ask well the big deal is you could actually take a uh, build a high voltage wind turbine 
And you wouldn't have to worry about back EMF because there's actually no direct connection to the circuit because it's jumping across this spark gap charging this capacitor bank up. Now this is only a 4.5 volt uh, system and it's able to do a pretty good job of charging on there. I had my uh, voltmeter on there but every time it pulses it shoots way up in the high range and so I wasn't sure I was getting a, a really accurate uh, signal. But to show you this thing is charging up I've got this uh, 12 volt uh, it's actually like uh, 4 volts to 28 volt DC piezoelectric uh, speaker. So I'm going to touch it on here and drain some of this juice off of this. So it, it is definitely charging without a doubt. Now what the deal is, I've got another uh, bulb starter right here that when this thing gets to its complete charge and can jump across that gap then it'll pulse that coil and as I showed you that little LED earlier it's actually it's actually pulsing it to some extent without getting the plasma effect inside there so it's actually getting a little bit of wireless transmission going on through this entire coil setup here. This is that two-in-one coil that I did the video of that has uh, built-in capacitor layers and such. I'm going to reach over here and turn on my radio and you'll be able to hear her as that thing pulses. I'm hoping you can hear that well. And if you look over there at the monitor which is probably about five or six feet away you'll see a streak go across it whenever it pulses hard and when the sun was out it would pulse a lot harder obviously because it was getting it's right now it's running off the battery and kind of seems to be slowing down a hair but I believe that if you put a larger battery back up on that 4.5 volt system you can get it to last a whole lot longer and stay strong all the way through. There's a good one right there. I hope that picked up. Keep an eye on that monitor. There's one right there. There's one. Some, some tiny ones. Every, every time it pulses, you do see a little distortion on the on the monitor. Like I said, that's about at least five or six feet away, and it's picking up on that. Plus, it's picking up on this radio over here, which I'm going to turn off because that's getting annoying. Anyway, watch as the uh, watch as it pulses. You'll see that plasma in these in these bulbs. And you can you can see both sides uh, arcing across to the uh, to the deal. And I will put the um, I will put the uh, buzzer on there again to see if it uh, pulled back its charge that I drained off there earlier. Yep. So, now I'm going to stop. There it goes. <laughs> I think this is exciting because if you had the right capacitor bank, if you had multiples of these uh, fence chargers out there, you could get real-time energy on demand. It's a simple solution with off-the-shelf uh, products that you can, uh, you can buy and you know you could salvage the capacitors you can get these here little bulb starters at Walmart and if I can 
find it over here. I've got a doggone uh, package that they came in. And I'll put that up to the screen so you can see. All right. Let's see if we can get this. These are what they are. Oh, is it blurry? Hold still. Anyway, uh, those are the numbers on it. They're made by GE. They come two in a package, and they were about two dollars and something uh, per per deal there. And those are what I'm using for the initial spark gap. So, and they're also being used as diodes. It goes all the way back to the mercury arc rectifier that uh, was essentially the first diode slash plasma reactor, and it had a lot of capabilities that I'm not sure that they were aware of back in the day but either way it's a simple way to take high voltage uh, AC turn it into DC so that you can charge capacitor banks and keep in mind that like I said this is just a small unit that I've got out there it's only 4.5 volts of electricity and uh, it uh, is charging this capacitor and you seen by that piezo buzzer which uh, th this uh, let me see if I can get a bolt me measurement on this thing and you can watch as it pulses. Do, 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 do. All right, let's see if I can do this. Doggone it. All right, let's see. Without touching the wrong doggone thing. Watch it when, when it, it'll jump, but it's up to 4.26 volts right there, and that's in the that's in the regular volt range. That's not millivolts. That's actual voltage. And so, with that said, when you connect your load to the deal, you can actually get good working uh, voltage out of it. Alright, gonna make a liar out of me. Doggone it, what did I do? I done shorted something out. Alright, well, mess that up. Anyway, like I say, try it. Try it yourself, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um,. Apparently I uh, shorted the capacitor out when I was trying to put the meter on there. Dragging it off or something. But uh, when it charges up to its full 60 volts, I figured out that uh, it seems to, after every four pulses, at least raise a volt up one volt whenever the sun's out bright it uh, charges seems to charge a lot better but uh, let me see if it's getting on that screen again there's a tiny one yeah it's getting a little weaker uh, right now it's kind of cloudy outside but there's a good one Anyway, I just uh, wanted to share that with you. So if you decide you want to make you a, a high voltage wind turbine, it's all about uh, the thickness of the wire and the number of turns on there. You can actually build like a muddy, uh, muddy mud man's actual flux wind turbine. And uh, instead of winding it like a regular, uh, a, a regular wind turbine would be wound for high current and watts and all that kind of stuff, you just want uh, you just want the high voltage that's all you need in order to make this work like this and uh, there's also the uh, um, what do they call those doggone the, the, the direct drive uh, washing machine and dryer motors if you've seen some of the videos out there on those those put out some serious arcs and it probably would take a heavier uh, starter system like this right here because uh, I'm sure that with that much uh, power going through these these are going to get uh, really hot probably blow up 
but either way now you know how to take uh, if you could get a hold of some old mercury arc rectifiers or actually uh, get you uh, some argon versions of it modern updated build you uh, some argon versions and you can use those as uh, diodes and there right there is your bridge rectifier to turn your high voltage AC into DC to charge it to get usable power so I hope that helps you out. Um, if you got any questions, uh, you contact me on Skype or come on the uh, Mad Science Show on Saturdays on ShazizRadio.com and uh, join in with the, the rest of us and uh, we'll uh, solve all these things together. So with that said, I'm going to try to end this now because I've got pretty long in the video. Peace and love everybody and take care. Hello everybody, one little short addendum I forgot to mention on there. When you get these uh, bulb starters, there's a little condenser on there that looks like this right here. In order to use them the way that I'm using them on there, you need to clip this thing off. You could probably use it for some other purpose, but it's not needed to use them for uh, like the diodes like the way that I'm using them. So I wanted to add that in there uh, just uh, so that you'd have that bit of information. Peace and, peace and love everybody. Take care. Stay tuned.